It's rare that I feel so strongly about not liking a product so much that I make a video on it simply because I think it's rubbish. But I feel that with the significant amount of big name YouTubers gushing over these mice, there needs to be someone who stands up and says enough is enough. So I want to talk about all of the problems I've had and why perhaps you shouldn't buy any of the Logitech MX Master mice especially if you have an Apple computer. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. Now before we begin, I want to ask you guys a very quick favour. Pop down to the comments and let me know what mouse you are using or what mouse you'd recommend because I'm trying to crowdsource some new mouse options and you'll find out why in this episode because I'm currently using this, the Logitech MX Master 3. But I wish I wasn't. The thing is, you only need to look at the desk setup videos on YouTube and desk setup photos on Instagram to see the MX Master series of mice are one of the most popular mice at the moment. You just see them everywhere. I mean, hell, I've got one. I've got two. The MX Master 3 and the MX Master 1. Now, based on the paper specs alone, it's easy to see why this is one of the most popular series of mice. These mice have some incredible power features. Dual scroll wheels for both vertical and horizontal scrolling, smart shifting between ratchet and free spinning on the main scroll wheel, tons of programmable extra buttons that can also be programmed to do different things dependent on the app that you're in. And they even allow multiple saved connections to switch between devices. All of this with around 70 days of use on a full charge. The feature list goes on. No one can argue that these aren't feature rich, but I think that's the problem. All those big names who recommend them are potentially blinded by the feature rich capabilities. And the way they talk about them, you'd think these were some kind of gift from the gods, but quite frankly, I think they're wrong. And here's why. Let's start with the special edition version of the MX Master 1. Although this is the one, it's still considered a current device and it's still sold by Logitech and Amazon. And this mouse will set you back with discount at around £60. And if you pay full price, it's 80 quid. Now, objectively speaking, that's quite pricey for a mouse. Sure, there are more expensive mice out there, but there are also a ton of cheaper mice with similar ergonomics, such as the Razer Basilisk series. But the feature list of these mice fit my needs and the advertised compatibility with Mac OS was an absolute must. Now, at first, I absolutely loved this mouse. I was drawn to the MX-1 because of its bronze accents, the low poly design of the grip and the ergonomics are brilliant. But as soon as I started using it, I discovered it just does not work. Often the mouse would have a ton of jitter or lag to the point where it would take me twice as long to do anything because it was so imprecise. It was horrible. Now changing the surfaces I was using on this on didn't work either. Wood, leather, wool. And then I tried switching between the unifying receiver that came with it and Bluetooth and still it was no better. And I'm not the only one with this problem. A quick Google and you'll come across post after post about this jitter issue. So naturally I got in touch with Logitech to give them the opportunity to help rectify this issue or provide a solution. They told me that the software the MX1 mouse uses isn't Mac M1 native and that their native software for the M1 chip doesn't support the MX1. Bear in mind that the M1 chip was released, what, 15 months ago? And this mouse is still one that they're currently selling at over £50 and being marked as made for Mac. I don't think this is solely the cause of all the jitter issues, the fact that I'm using an M1 chip, because a lot of the posts, people are using Intel chipsets with this as well and still having that issue. 
The only option I could see here naturally was for me to spend another £80 to buy the MX Master 3, which works with the beta software that supposedly natively runs on the M1 chip. Now, this was a huge annoyance because I'm being made to feel like because I didn't spend a little bit more for the MX3 in the first place, I'm being penalised, when in reality, money wasn't the issue, the ergonomics were. The MX3 is bulkier, taller, and the appearance looks nowhere near as nice as the MX1 in my opinion. Not to mention the button placement is nowhere near as good, and what's even worse is the thumb wheel, which is so high and so far from where you naturally rest your thumb, it makes it a chore to use. Compare this to the MX Master 1, and you can easily see what I mean with the thumb wheel much, much closer to your natural resting position. Now, another big problem with the MX3 comes if you stupidly buy the Mac-specific version of this mouse, because it doesn't come with a unifying receiver, and you only have the option of connecting it via Bluetooth out of the box. Now, normally, this wouldn't be an issue unless you're using a Mac Mini M1, like me. Now these things, as good as they are, have a major Achilles heel when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, in the sense that they are about as reliable as the train network in Wales. This is largely due to the positioning of the Bluetooth module inside its metal shell. And again, to back this up, you only need to have a look at a few forums to see how many people had this issue with connectivity on the Mac Mini. But because the MX Master 3 Mac Edition doesn't come with that unifying receiver, it means you are forced to use the Bluetooth, meaning the connection will often stutter or lag, even when the system is running fine which is the exact problem that you bought the MX Master 3 to try and solve in the first place. Now you'd think a simple solution would be to use a wired connection, which I wouldn't be averse to. Many people prefer to use mice wired anyway, as it reduces latency and improves precision, and you don't have to bugger about trying to charge it when it's out of battery. But of course, none of the MX Master mice support wired usage. Why? Why? <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Fortunately, there is a semi solution. If you have a unifying receiver from another product, like I had with the MX Master 1, you can pair this up to that. You can pair it up to the MX Master 3. And if you don't have one, they only cost about a tenner on Amazon, so not too bad. And this allows a direct 2.4 gigahertz connection, although that can be affected by devices using wireless connection around it. But after you've bought two mice, a unifying receiver, spent around £160 and several days of your life experimenting, you'd think that you might finally have a mouse that works, right? Well, it certainly works without issues some of the time. And that's because the software is still in beta. I still occasionally get jitter or lag, and here's an example from the other day. You can see the mouse pointer makes several jumps when moving it. And the only way forwards is opening Activity Monitor and restarting the Logitech software, which might fix the problem two out of five times. The rest of the time, you just have to wait until it stops. There doesn't seem to be any correlation to why it's doing it. So all in all, utterly rubbish which means I wanted to hunt for an alternative. And this is perhaps the biggest issue, and I hate to say it, but there really isn't any decent alternatives. For me, the ability to scroll sideways with the thumb wheel is an absolute game changer for working in programs like Final Cut Pro and being able to easily skim through that timeline. Now, yes, there is one glaringly obvious alternative here that would give me the functions that I want and the ability to scroll horizontally as well, and that's the Apple Magic Mouse, or even, I guess, the Magic Trackpad. Now, these are both designed specifically for this type of interactivity with your computer, and the nature of both allows you to easily scroll horizontal as well as vertical. The problem is, I don't like them. The mouse is just ridiculous. I worked for Apple for 10 years, and in my opinion, the Magic Mouse is among one of the worst design products that the company has released during that time. I'm not basing that off functionality because, unarguably, 
is brilliant. I'm basing my opinion purely on the ergonomics and product design. It's a great example where obsessing about the product style has had a detrimental effect to the actual functionality and usage of the product. I mean, come on, I think a brick would be more supportive in your palm. When I bought my first iMac, I used one for about five years straight, and when using it for a few hours at a time anyway, my hand would cramp up because it offers no support at all. And as for the design of the charging port, don't even get me started on that, and don't even try defending it. People try and use this bizarre argument that Apple meant for us to use it wirelessly, and is to encourage that, or keeping it plugged in degrades the battery, which is why the charger is on the bottom. Well, if that was the case, why doesn't the keyboard or trackpad have a charging port underneath then? Hmm? Anyway. That's another video for another day. I have a similar issue with a trackpad. On one hand, it's great, good navigation of the OS, and the gesture functionality is really useful. But again, I find I can't use it for long periods of time without getting cramp in my hand, because there's just no support. Bear in mind that in my case, I spend most of the day with the mouse in my hand and my other hand on a number pad, which I use as a hotkey selector for different tools whilst editing. Whereas most people will probably flip between typing and using a mouse. So I think any issues regarding comfort and ergonomics are probably exasperated in my use case. So I need a mouse that has a similar or better functionality than the features of Apple peripherals whilst being much more ergonomic and a better design like this with the ability to charge and use it at the same time even if it's not usable via the wire. But it really doesn't leave many options available. There's these, the Logitech MX Master Series, and then there's the Vixing Pioneer, which is not exactly a known name in the mouse world. And then there's a few obscure ball mice, like the one from the Amazon's Basics range. Now, I'm really not keen on that design at all, but seriously, I'm considering giving it a go. Logitech do have a few ball mice as well, but at this point I'm feeling so aggrieved at the lack of proper support and solutions for these mice that I don't want to give them another penny of my pounds until they pull their finger out and sort these problems out. But again, as a reminder, I want to know what you guys have. Have you got any recommendations for mice? And I'd love to know exactly what you're using at this moment in time, so please let us all know in the comments. But the thing is, I guess I feel annoyed by these mice because they get such good reviews and rarely do people talk about the issues that plague them. And what annoys me even more is that they could actually be a really great product. The design is great and although I talk about the MX3 not being as comfortable as the MX1, comfort is subjective so it might be the other way around for someone else. But it's just irritating that it feels like Logitech have shoehorned me into spending a lot of money and time trying to get these mice to work. And even then, it only works some of the time because the software is still in beta. And why? Why is it still in beta? Why aren't all of their mice supported on the new N1 Max? 15 months they've had. And this is a company that had a revenue of 5.2 billion in 2021. 5.2 billion! Let that sink in for a second. 5.2 billion and they still can't update a little bit of software to make a mouse work properly on products that are listed as being supported or even made for. Anyway, yes, there aren't any alternatives right now that come close to this on paper. But hell, at this point, surely anything is better. Even something like that. Obviously, everything at the time of this review is correct in February 2022, and there may be updates down the road. And if they do make these mice work properly, then I'll pin a comment below and outline any significant changes that they've made. But other than that, guys, help us all out and let us know what mice you use in the comments so we can have a good chinwag about that. Let me know what you think as well. If you've got one of these, do you have the same issues that I have? Hmm annoying but anyway guys make sure you hit that thumbs up subscribe and notification bell if you enjoyed today's episode and certainly if you've saved some money through watching this episode and i'll see you back for another episode of stew's reviews soon